Hello and welcome to our Kickstarter Spotlight. This is our regular roundup of games looking for funding online. I'm Charlie and today I'll be looking at Strike Suit Zero. I'm Keith and I'll be having a look at Interstellar Marines Prologue. And I'm Alex, I'll be looking at Cthulhu World Combat. So, Strike Suit Zero. This is a an, a space combat game that the uh, developers are toting as being Space Combat Reborn. They're wanting to return to the 90s heyday of space combat that seems to have been overlooked in recent games. Um, it's designed to be fast and large-scale space pilot fights, including dogfights and objective-based gameplay. Um, the main feature of it is that you're controlling a spaceship that has the ability to turn into a, a mecha, more of a uh, stationary fighting style. The game as a whole is designed around a story based on defense of Earth against invading alien species, and each mission that you undertake will have consequences on the re- end result of the Earth. For example, your side missions or side objectives within each mission will, and depending whether or not you complete them and to what extent, could end up uh, influencing the end of Earth. You can decide to go after any objective you want. You've got free movement, but it's designed on a grand scale. Um, there's even things put in for taking out certain sections of like the enemy command craft. If you target certain things, which reminds me a lot of Star Wars, ah, Star uh, Wars Battlefront. Battlefront. Oh, yes. oh yeah, yeah. yeah the space battles in Battlefront Two. Um, yeah. Targeting specific bits will take out parts of the ship, for example. Those, you know. those are the only levels I'd play on Battlefront 2. <laughs> Just the space ones. Yeah, they yeah. really messed up the uh, ground combat in that, I thought. Yeah. In space all the way, yeah. So yeah, I mean, awesome. you can take out the ship's defences, the ship's engines, this, that and the other, to help with your fight. Um, or you can just stick with the dogfights, and, you know, depending on what you fancy or, or what you feel like, really. I really hope you can land in the hangar bay now, take the ship apart from the inside like you could battle for it. <laughs> See, that would actually give the uh, whole mech thing a, a purpose because at the moment I'm looking at it going, it makes a great space game, but I don't know where the mech bit comes in. Like, Yeah, it is kind of weird, isn't it? Transform like, into a mech in mid-flight. The design for the mech, the design for the mech is to allow for better dodging, for example, if you've got homing missiles locked on you, that sort of thing. Um, it's to allow another level of gameplay and fighting and there's differences between the two abilities. If you're with a ship, you've got fast movement along you know, large distances and a good amount of power to your thrust, but you're relatively weak with the weapons. Now, you switch out to the mech, you become a lot more vulnerable because you can't maneuver so much, but your weapons are a lot more powerful. Ah, so just like Transformers then. Mm. <laughs> That's how it works in the multiplayer <laughs> for that. See, I think if they did have like a massive uh, like fly through hangar bay you just fly into it stop turn into a mech shoot things and maybe turrets pop up or something you shoot them and then you fly away again that'd be you pretty sh- cool you should be on the development team there it reminds me of um pretty much any level in transformers where you get to be a space sh- uh not a spaceship like a little fighter jet slash transformer thing and i love mech games so this looks good um is it solely single player or are they bringing in multiplayer as well at the moment it's all based around single player game though they haven't ruled out the ability to add multiplayer later on. Now, whether that's something they add, should they reach some ridiculous funding level, or whether it could be something that's developed, you know, in, as the future of the game develops, I, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see on that. To be honest, I'm kind of okay with that. I like games that concentrate on making a really good single-player game. I've always thought multiplayer should just be uh, when you get bored of the single-player, you play that kind of thing anyway. Or, or if the, sort of the game looks like multiplayer will be pretty obviously well integrated yeah yeah they are looking for a hundred thousand dollars for total funding they're currently sitting on seventy nine thousand, and they've got 21 days left to go so that looks like quite a sure bet it's going to be finished uh, there's the usual sort of reward tiers available currently sat at twenty dollars if you're wanting a copy of the game at the end of it they do currently have a stretch goal in place for $130,000, which is quite possible considering the popularity of it so far. That would allow for mod tools for the community. So, good looking game. Um, Keith, what have you got for us this week? I am looking at Interstellar Marines, specifically Prologue. Uh, the point behind this game is it's an FPS sci-fi tactical co-op game. If anyone's played Rainbow Six or System Shock 2, you'll know what we're talking about. This basically takes that 
puts it into a sci-fi setting. Um, and you've got enemies running around. I mean, they've got sort of crash dummies that act as uh, your target things in the in the training level. They've got shark dogs. It's like a great white shark with little legs that looks amazing. And basically, it's that crossed with an RPG so that you level up by killing people, etc., etc., and you can get upgrades for your weapon. You might put a silencer on a stock, extra big magazine, or you could just upgrade things like your night vision in your HUD. And you've got your ability to take your helmet off and have better visuals, better, uh, you know, awareness. But uh, if you have your helmet on, then you get the AI HUD and stuff like that and overlays and whatever. And maybe uh, if you've got the upgrade like night vision. And I really like the idea of blending an FPS with this whole role-playing aspect. It's been done a couple of times before, and, you know, Borderlands does it. Borderlands doesn't do it in the whole tactical sense. Amazing fun, but it's totally different to the tactical games where a few shots is important. Uh, originally, the game was developed, or at least began development, all the way back in 2006 with two guys and their funder. Um, and they were going to use the Unreal Free Aid engine, and then... Everything went tits up when the financial crisis happened and then no one would touch the game because it was a new high-risk venture. And now they've gone, well, we really want to bring it back. And after laying off the entire team, these two guys and the funder are sort of sitting there going, we really still want to bring this out. So they've started up again and trying to use Kickstarter as a base. And uh, they're now using the, un uh, the Unity engine because Unity is amazing and we get so many games these days that are coming out using Unity. Um, and it's great for cross-platform. I mean, this game's going to be Windows, Mac, and Linux uh, on Steam with DRM free, which would be great. And they're asking for 600,000, which is a lot. And they've been up for one day and they've got 15 grand. So it's really early days. I can't say whether they'll make it or not yet. From that amount of money, I can say maybe. It's a big game. They're looking for money. They're looking to use it to hire basically an entire team. Personally, that sounds amazing. This is a game, uh, it's a prologue. They're planning on doing a trilogy of games. Basic level for getting the prologue game is $20. But if you go for the higher backer ones, which is $90, you get a digital only trilogy. So you get all three games as they come out. Yeah, having looked at the trailer for this, I was quite impressed by the, the ethos in making, you know, this real first person uh, looking process of it. You know, they were really focused on, on the details in it and making it quite immersive and believable that you're in the first person. I think they've got it bang on. The uh, gameplay that they brought out as the sort of prototype ones, that looked like a completely polished and finished game and blew me away. So seeing this thing to come, come to completion would be brilliant. They've been through a lot of it, and it's nice that the two guys and the, the guy who was funding them initially, um, they've actually stayed with it. And I love the concept, and the artwork and design for it looks amazing. I mean, a giant white shark running at you would scare the shit out of you. I think that counts perfectly for such a tactical game where it's a bit of mood lighting and you're kind of going to be scared. Walking around I was going to say the lighting's really nice and the bits they've shown. It, it looks good. It looks a little bit like the Aliens game, Colonial Marines, that's been in production for the last like 10 years or whatever. Well, yeah, so, in, their, uh, in their sort of inspiration, they did include a clip which I spotted immediately and knew it was from Aliens because I love that film. Mm -hmm. and Who doesn't? Yeah, I think that's, that's bang on for the inspiration. I mean, it looks dark and moody. You play a tactical thing, so you're going to be a normal person who dies easily. And you've got sharks with legs running at you. Rather reminiscent. This whole emphasis on co-op I really like. And I think a lot of games are realizing more and more that this whole tactical aspect with co-op is a kind of a benefit. I mean, Borderlands needs it to be fun. Battlefield needs it a fair amount to be fun and all of those have done really well this one particularly though it looks as though it's taking that and moving it to in slightly different direction it looks in itself a bit of a breath of fresh air which i think we do need in the games industry at the moment so i'm looking forward to this and you know really hoping that they take these ideals and it gets put through right alex what have you got for us i'm looking at cthulhu world combat so this is a light turn-based strategy game, uh, currently for iOS, so iPhone, iPod, and iPad, mixing elements of things like Risk, Civilization, and Advance Wars with the H.P. Lovecraft Cthulhu mythos, which I've always been a huge fan of. People who have worked on this project have worked on things like Age of Empires, Age of Myth, Halo Wars, Oblivion, Sid Meier's Civilization, uh, Sid Meier's Pirates, 
So they have a good background in the game industry. Okay, well, I, I wasn't amazingly convinced by the game until you said that background. Now I'm really interested. Well, yeah, it, it, it doesn't look like a game coming from that sort of background, considering it is an iOS thing. But the pictures of it I've seen look really good. It, uh, there's a video on the Kickstarter page, and you can see it's a nice vector art style, well-animated troops fighting. So you can play one of several factions. At present, they have four. Cthulhu. Uh, the Crawling Chaos, the Black Goat, otherwise known as Shubnigarath, and the Yellow Sign. You'll play as one of these factions, and the more money they get, the more factions they'll add in. They'll all have unique units, and you'll be fighting over assorted worlds, or Earth, or various other ones, like Yoggoth from the Mythos. You'll summon units at different at magical gates across these worlds, and it's a turn-based asynchronous strategy game, a bit like Hero Academy, where you'll send your turns to each other, you'll move your units around and try to conquer the planet for your faction. From what I've seen, the units are going to be fairly varied. They all have basic stats, health, move, defense, attack, but the terrain they're on will affect their movement and defense values. Um, You can get air units, and there'll be special abilities and stuff. So the only one I've seen is the flying polyp, which is a flying unit. It can attack a ground and flying units, and it deals three damage instead of one on a successful hit. So, you know, you get some... You'll have tons of these different units for different factions with a lot of variety, a lot of personality, especially with the really nice vector art style. The game itself costs $10, uh, £6 or €8. Euros. That's the minimum value to get a copy for iPhone or iPad. You'll get a wallpaper for your PC and your name in the credits. Their base goal was 300000 If they hit 500 k they're going to make an enhanced version with a single-player campaign, more worlds and factions. If they hit 700000 they're going to add in a game editor. So I guess that's a level editor? Um, a bigger single-player campaign, and bring out a PC, Mac, and Xbox Live Arcade release. If they hit 1 million, they're going to have a board game based on the rules of it. So that's really interesting. Overall, it looks like a really nice game. It doesn't look like it would be all that special, but I think the theme adds a lot to it. But again, I'm a fairly big fanboy of the mythos. But yeah, that's Cthulhu World Combat. It's an interesting-looking game, and... It's nice to see more of this asynchronous strategy game coming out. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. That's it from us this week. Uh, Do remember to check the links below for either of the three games that we've just shown you. That link to the Kickstarter page. If you enjoyed the episode, please like and subscribe. uh, And check our Facebook or Twitter if you're interested. The link should all be down below. See you next week. Bye. Bye.